Well, good morning. Uh, I want to welcome each of you to Cross Community Church, especially those of you who are our guests today. If today is your first time to ever attend here, I want you to know that you are in for a treat. The level of preaching is going to be better than what you're normally going to get here uh, because my friend Antonio Correa is going to be leading us today. Antonio is the pastor of Lego LBN in Guanare, Venezuela. Uh, he's a great leader and a wonderful friend. So if you would, put your hands together and welcome Antonio Correa. Thank you. Well, good morning. God bless you all. My pleasure. It's my bless to be here with you. It's wonderful. Thank you, Pastor Jason, family, cross community. You are great. Thank you for, for opening the doors here for me. God is great. Um, I am very happy to be here, and I want to share this happiness with my family in Venezuela. I am very sure they are looking online, so let me say hello in Spanish, okay? I'm, I'm very sure that you will understand everything, but let me, a few words in Spanish, okay? Hola, Iglesia Lego, un abrazo desde aquí para todos ustedes. Les amamos, les amo, y qué placer que estemos juntos en esto. Dios les bendiga. You got it, right? Easy. <laughs> You're picking words. Well, I was here last year in November, and I show you a little bit about Venezuela, my country, my beautiful country, Venezuela, uh, but, and how we are facing and dealing with many difficult times, difficult moments, and difficult situations around 20 years now. And uh, these last 22 years in Venezuela, everything is coming like down, down, down in many ways, political, economic, and many, many kind of things. And I already showed you that part, but today, uh, what I, I am very sure that God called us, called me to, to tell you this morning is another thing. I mean, Venezuela is still facing really hard times, but I want to show you what God is doing and why we are facing this believing in God, because we all need believing God. Amen? I need believing God. Somebody else need to believe in God? I need believing God every days of my life. And uh, even when things are hard in our life, we have to put out our, our eyes in Jesus. Something that I learned this time is when God is the only thing you have, you will realize that He is the only thing you need. And uh, for me, that's what every days of my life give me strength to keep going. When, he, when you put your eyes on Jesus, when you understand that the only thing that you really need is Jesus, you will keep going. I know many people that have everything in their life, but they still have something that they need. Something that not let them to be full in their life. That something is Jesus, my brother and my sister. I know that uh, this, this generation say to us many things, many lies. Like we need some stuff that we, are, we don't need it. You know, like we need to change our car because we need to change our car every year. That's a lie. <laughs> Nobody needs to change his car <laughs> every year. I mean, my car is 2015, and I hope I still have more years. <laughs> it's like you don't need that. I mean, what we really, really need is Jesus Christ. So in this thing that we are facing in Venezuela, we have, a, as a church, as Lego church, we have a cry war, a war cry, or whatever it is. But I want to, to share with you this morning what is this war cry or battle cry. Because we, we all, every year in January, we say this will be our war cry this year. And this is, let me see, it's time to shine. Can you say this with me, please? It's time to shine. In the beginning of this year, we say it's time to shine. And later I say this, many people ask me, Antonio, it's time to shine in Venezuela? In the darkness that you are living, it's time to shine? How is possible 
that you say to the church it's time to shine when they are facing many, many problems. And what I think is that this is a message from the Bible to our life, from the heart of God to our life. Why I say this? Let's go to the Bible and the Apostle Paul write to the Philippians in chapter 2. And he says, okay, that will be in the screen. There is some words, not easy for me, but you're reading and you will understand. So do all things without mormons and disputings that may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the might of a crooked and perverse nation, among who shine as light in the world. You can see how the Apostle Paul says, hey, in the middle of the darkness generation, you need to shine as a light. So my brothers and sisters, it's time to shine. Right? It's time to shine. So I have a question. You think that the generation that we are living right now is a perverse generation? A bad generation? I think we are worse than when Paul write this book. I think we are way much worse than that. So I believe that this message is for our church, the Christian church in the world today. We need to be the light of the world because it's what God called us to do. Okay? Amen? So how many of you likes to look good? Let me see your hands. How many of you likes to look good? Everybody looks good, yeah. You look great. We spend many time and money trying to look good, right? Because we take a shower every day, or so you should to take a shower every day. I hope the people next to you take a shower every day. But we have to. We, have, we need to. So we spend, we uh, brush our teeth every day, right? Or we should. We work a lot to have more things. We study, go to the school, high school, university, MBA, uh, PhD, whatever. And we, we want to be doctors and uh, engineers and many things because that is like great in our life. Well, my brothers and sisters, everything what I say is very nice, but it's not what Paul is saying. <laughs> He's not saying like you have to look good in the exterior, outside. He's not saying you have to look good when everybody see you. He says you have to shine. In the darkest moment of your life, you need to shine. And it's what God is calling us to do. Shine. The light of Jesus in our lives. Now, are we shining the light of God in our life? Because sometimes... The Christianity, the churches today are not shining the, the light of God. I don't know if that happened here, but in Venezuela, many people, many people, when I say we have to shine in the dark, every, the people say it's logical. You have to shine in the light. But it's not that logical in the church sometimes, or maybe it's in Venezuela. I don't know here. But in Venezuela, there is some Christians, they are not shining the light of Jesus in their life. I don't know what light they are shining because they, they are more close to the darkness than to the light. So why I say this? Because I know many non-believers friends. I say then you need Jesus. And sometimes they say, I don't want to be Christian like some, they say, Maria or whatever name. I don't want to be Christian like my neighbor because my neighbor told too much. She used, she used her town like very long. I don't want to be Christian like, like this man because he cried to his wife every day. And there is in the world many people that have no problem with God. But they have problem with the people of God. Because they are, Christians sometimes are looking good. 
but nor shine in the light of Jesus. There, these are two different things. Sometimes we have the right looking, the right stamp in the car. I love Jesus. In, in Guanare, we have many cars with a big sign that say, read the Bible. So maybe you have in your car, read the Bible. But if you're not reading your Bible every day, <laughs> maybe you're looking good, but you're not shining. This is a problem because in the Bible, who is the best friend of the singers? Jesus. Because the singers have no problem to go out and know Jesus. The religion people say, Jesus, he eat too much and he go to Paris. You read this before? The religion people don't seem like Jesus because Jesus get close to the people. But who is the only one in the Bible that have not seen? Jesus. So Jesus can show us it's an example from someone who did not sing, but he attracted the singer. This is a big problem with many churches today. Why? Because today we see the church upside down. We sin a lot, and our attitude drives the people away from Jesus. So there is many people looking like Christians. Faces like Christians, clothes like Christians, but not shining in the light of Jesus. And my brothers and sisters, these are two very, very different things. So, oh, maybe that happened only in Venezuela. <laughs> I don't know. I don't live here. But as never in our life, as never in many generations, we need Jesus. I need Jesus. Somebody else need Jesus? I need Jesus. Every day of my life. A few verses before, the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 2.12, he says, Wherefore, my beloved, as they have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And I love how Paul says, work out your own salvation. And there is many problems with the theological people. They are fighting the salvation. That thing. I, don't, I, don't, I don't go into go deep on this. I just, I just want to share something that I believe in, in this. Paul says, work out on your salvation. It's like when people say, you need to work out your body. I need it, right? But I already have my body. I need to work out my body to be healthy and look good and shine. <laughs> so we already, in Jesus Christ, we already have our salvation. He is our salvation. Paul says, you need to go to the gym. Be prepared in the gym of the, your salvation. And show the life of Jesus Christ in this world. Why? Because my brothers and sisters, this generation says to the good bad and to the bad good. Yes or not? Like never before. When you are following the Bible, the people will say, oh no, that's not good. You are religion people. Brothers and sisters, we need to work out our salvation. We need to a daily devotional, a daily relationship with Jesus Christ. We need to have Jesus as our first thing in our, in our life. That no matter if you are in Venezuela or United States. That no matter if you are facing something nice or something really hard. Everything what we need, His name is Jesus. Amen? Now, are you shining the life of Jesus? Is the people around you looking that Jesus is alive in your, in your words, your hands, 
We need to work out. We need to obey Jesus. We need to have a great relationship with Jesus. And I know it's not easy, my brothers, my sisters. I know it's not easy to, to follow Jesus in our life. I, I have 41 years old, and uh, for these 16, 17 years, I'm pastoring our church in Venezuela. And uh, it's not easy because situations are very hard. We all face difficult situations in our life. You here facing difficult situations, right? We all face it. So when you're facing difficult situations, in my mind, sometimes I think like, oh man, I can't with all situations, with everything. It's like, Lord, I am human. So the normal people quit and say, no, I don't want to be more any more Christians. But I always imagine how the disciples, you know, the, when Jesus go to the heaven, he left these 12 disciples. One, Judah, is gone. So he have 11 disciples. And there was, this guy was Jesus' plan A. He have no more plan than these guys. And these guys change the world where they live. Why they did it? Because they were shining. They were not just looking good. They were shining the life of God. Why? Because they say, I believe in Jesus and I can give my life for the message that I am preaching. Sometimes... When we are facing difficult moments in our life, we say, no, God. I know because I feel it many times. Sometimes I, I am, in my mind always came a voice that tell me, you can go to another country. You, got, you can go to on another place and have a better life, a relaxed life, an easy life. Always that, that voice is coming to me because I can do it. But I always remember, you can imagine Paul, Peter, say, oh, no, Lord, I can't preach anymore because my car is broken. I have a mother-in-law. You don't know about it because you don't have mother-in-law because you are God. I love my mother-in-law. And thanks God because she don't understand what I say right now. <laughs> <laughs> but what I want to say is that life is hard, my brothers and sisters. And all we need is Jesus. Maybe you are a teenager. Maybe you are an adult. Any situation that you are facing... You need, to sit, you need to say, you know what, Jesus? I need you. And I want to shine your light in this darkness world. Because believe me, believe me, always will be a voice telling you to do the wrong things. To go to other place. But believe me, that always Jesus will be there to be your strength. Hug you. And love you and make you strength to shine his light. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, yes, we are facing difficult moments. Yes, we are facing maybe the darkest generations in the world. But we also have a great God, a live God. We have Jesus Christ, and he is more than enough. Amen. So I want to show you a video about how sometimes life is hard. Sometimes life is not like I would like to, but we need to shine the life of Jesus and we need to have a good attitude. Okay? So let's see this video.
Huggies. <laughs> yeah. So, life is hard. We have to face difficult moments. But it's time that the people of God stand up and shine the life of Jesus. It's time for us to believe more to Jesus than to the situation. Because always will be a situation. Always will be a mother-in-law somewhere. <laughs> but we will always have our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, you can imagine how will be your family affect if you shine the light of God every day of your life? You can imagine how the place where you work will be affected if you shine the light of God, of God every day of your life. My brothers, you can imagine even if all Christians in Poro shine the light of God. Not just looking good, shining the light of God. You can imagine if this happened in America. You can imagine if this happened in the whole world that we can shine the light of God. That changed the world. That's why my call today for you is that it's time to not just looking good, because it's okay that we look good. But more than looking good, it's time to shine. It's time that the people around you can see Jesus in your life. It's time that anybody who knows you and somebody speak about Jesus, they will say, ah, I know somebody that looks like Jesus. My neighbor. Speak like Jesus. Act like Jesus. It's time to shine. No matter if you are in Venezuela, no matter if you are in the United States, this letter from the Apostle Paul is alive for, for our generation today. Amen? So, if you want to shine the light of God, and you feel that this is for you, that like Christian, or maybe you are not Christian, but you feel that you need that light, you need Jesus, this is a good time to stand up and let's pray together. We can all stand up and pray together, because Jesus Christ is the only thing that we need. Amen? Somebody need Jesus? I, I mean, in our life, no matter if we are Christian or not, I need Jesus every day of my life. Someone here want to shine the light of God? I invite you, let's pray. Stand up and let's pray together. Amen? Close your eyes and in your own words say, okay, Lord, I need you. Jesus, I need you. I need you in my life, in my heart. I need you in my daily life. I want to shine your light. I don't want just looking good or looking like a Christian. I want to be shining the light of God in my life. This is a good moment to pray, to talk to our God. And ask Him to come into your heart. Sometimes we think that this is only for unbelievers, but as Christians, we need Jesus every day. Oh Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you because you are here. You are all we need. We may have many things in our life, but nothing can make us full like you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. We need you to shine in the darkness generation in this world. We need you, Jesus. I need you, Lord. Every day of my life, I need you. I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray for you can bless their life. That they can shine your light every day. In their family, in their works, in Poro, in the world. People can meet you because they know these people. 
Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your life. Thank you because all we need is Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right now we're going to have a time of response. Uh, Caleb's going to play. Josh is going to play for us. And this is the time for you. Uh, if you find yourself one of those uh, wealthy Americans um, that has every opportunity to live your life for Jesus Christ and yet so often getting distracted by other things. This is your time to respond and repent of the things that have captured your heart and ask God once again uh, to use you to be a light in the midst of this darkness. Today, if you're an unbeliever and uh, God's been speaking to your heart today, you need to trust Jesus with your life and receive that Amen. light in yourself. Uh, we're going to be right down here during this time of invitation, but whatever that looks like for you, I want to encourage you to respond in obedience to Christ.